Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Jason Skopp. Today I'm going to present the uh, technique and procedure of intraosseous bioplasty using core decompression and angel bone marrow concentrate. I use a spinal needle for my lesion localization. I don't like to use a big pin during this part because if I create multiple holes within the cortical bone as I'm trying to target my lesion, I'm more likely to lose some of my bone marrow concentrate during those uh, misfires. So a spinal needle is used to locate on an AP and a lateral projection. Again, I have the MRI up, so I have a general sense of where I'm trying to go. The fluoroscopic image confirms the location that I want to perform the intraosseous bioplasty with core decompression. Once I have this targeted, I put the spinal needle into position. I'll make a small percutaneous stab incision with an 11 blade. I have now correlated my 2.4 guide pin with the spinal needle used previously. I then target the lesion by drilling across the condyle. It's important to have enough guide pin in position so that we don't lose our position as we begin our core decompression. The 7 millimeter cannulate reamer is then passed over the guide wire and the core decompression proceeds. I like to back out the reamer manually to avoid any uh, loss of our position. Image intensification is then used to confirm that our guide pin is still in position after performing the core decompression. The bone marrow concentrate will then be delivered through an open-ended delivery cannula. The delivery cannula has an inner stylus trocar that is removed. The inner diameter allows us for to pass this over the 2.4 guide pin that was previously drilled during the core decompression. The open-ended delivery needle is then passed over our 2.4 guide pin into our previously created core decompression site. An image intensification is then performed to confirm location within our core decompression. The guide pin is now removed and the delivery cannula is stabilized with my hand against the uh, femur. I do like to get one image here to confirm that I'm still in position. Bone marrow aspirate was then obtained through the standard fashion and concentrated in the angel system. We transferred it into this viscous applicator where we have the bone marrow concentrate on the left side and calcium chloride thrombin mixture. This allows us to form a clot within the previously decompressed lesion so that we do not lose our bone marrow concentrate once we remove our delivery cannula. I will then begin to inject the mixture. While I'm injecting, I'm slowly going to be removing and backing out my delivery cannula under fluoroscopy to ensure that I have full fill of the lesion. After the bone marrow concentrate was injected into the lesion, the mixture of bone marrow concentrate and the calcium chloride thrombin takes approximately 30 seconds to clot. I typically leave the stylus in for one minute. After one minute, the delivery cannula and stylus is removed. Alternatively, to take advantage of the osteoinductive properties of DBM, the bone marrow concentrate can be mixed with DBM and then injected into the previously decompressed lesion. After one minute of mixing, we are ready to transfer the mixture into the core decompression site. We then inject through the delivery system. I like to back out as I'm injecting to ensure complete fill of the core decompression site. I use the inner stylus to the delivery needle to deliver the last one cc of product into the core decompression site. I leave it in place while the graft stabilizes. After one minute of graft stabilization, the knee is cycled several times demonstrating stability of our product. The knee is rearthroscoped to ensure that there has been no intraarticular elution. As you can see, intraosseous bioplasty is a simple, percutaneous, and reproducible technique for managing the spectrum of bone marrow lesions within the knee.